Hi, so on the members channel I built this thing, it's a home repolar generator uh, and it's made from bits out of the microwave and, and I go through the detail on that. Now the really interesting thing and everybody knows, if you get a static magnetic field and you uh, move a wire through that field you will generate a current because the um, wire moves relative to the field. You have a static field and a relative motion of the wire through that field current will be generated. Everybody knows this. If there is no relative motion, then there is no current. So if I were to move that magnetic field and that wire together, then we wouldn't expect current to be generated. So just imagine you have two magnets here, north-south, you wire in between them and you move those like that, you're not going to get any current. You have to move them like that and then you'll get current. So we need relative motion. And that's what you would expect. So when I made the homopolar generator, what I did was fix the magnets to two plates, these plastic plates actually, and then rotate that disc between those two fixed magnets working on that idea. And sure enough, it, it generates current and it generates voltage because it's a homopolar generator. So you'd expect all of that. That's really cool. But then I decided to try it where um, you were moving the magnets and the uh, wheel together. So what I did was I took the magnets and, and the wheel that I'd made, and this is just another one. The reason I've got two of them is I'm actually going to build the Tesla dual wheel homopolar generator. And then just put the magnets on either side of the wheel. So now when I spin the wheel, then the magnets and the um, wire are actually rotating in the same direction with each other. So between the two of them, there is no relative motion. I hope that's pretty clear, because it can get a little confusing quite quickly. But there is motion, that is the wheel is spinning, but the magnets and the wheel spin together, so there is no relative motion. Now one of the curious things about all of this is if you spin a uh, wheel within those magnets, you'll feel the extra force that you have to put on to get that wheel to move. If you do it without those, actually it moves really, really freely, and you'd expect that because there isn't that resistance of the magnetic field. But equally, you would expect it to do jack. The really interesting thing is it doesn't. It generates current. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, don't expect a huge amount of current because it's just a quick experimental lash-up. But it's amazing it generates any current. That's just fantastic. So I've um, taken a wire and connected it to the axle. And that's what you can see back here. It's just jammed into the bearing, actually, so that it touches the axle, connected it to the negative. At uh, the positive, I've put a resistor in series with it to give it a bit of a load. And on the end of it, I've got a carbon brush that I'm going to physically press against the outside of the aluminium wheel. Clearly, I'm wearing an insulating rubber glove to make sure that I'm not interfering with it. And I've popped it on this Rigol. And at the moment, I'm not sure if you can see the Rigol, but it's reading zip, which you'd expect it to. It's, it's an amp reading. It's a D, this is a DC generator, so it's on the DC uh, current, and there's just nothing happening. Now if I press that against that, so I'm now pressing my carbon brush against my aluminium here. Then we get a spike in the current reading, because there's a bit of um, contact electrification going on there, but it's point, minus 0.4 of a microamp. That's the kind of thing you'd expect if you were just touching carbon against aluminium. And after a little bit, it begins to settle down again to uh, nothing. Now it's at 0 0.020 microamps, so that contact electrification is evening itself out. What I've done here is attach a drill onto the spindle, and I'm going to spin that drill. Like I say, we don't get a huge reading, but we do get four microamps of generation out of that. Now stops turning the drill, it's dropped down to 0 0.003 microamps, which of course you'd expect, that's just general ambient bits and pieces, but it shoots up a thousandfold when I spin that. Now, as I say, that's not a huge amount of current, but it is current generation when there's zero relative motion between the wire and the magnetic field. That is awesomely interesting. Now obviously this is a very easy thing to replicate. All you're really doing is getting a metal disc, two magnets on it, spin the metal disc, can connect some contacts, one at the axle, one at the rim, and you will get current generation without relative motion. 
awesome! I mean, what can you say about that? That has got to be so interesting. I mean, I would encourage replication of that. I would encourage people to have a look at that and investigate that some more. Can that current be improved? I mean, you know, four microamps, hey, that's not going to charge your phone, is it? But it is astonishing. I think that we're getting anything at all with zero relative motion. So please do replicate it. Do make sure that you know you're checking what I'm doing and that I'm not just talking rubbish, because that is just astounding to me. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. I know it's it's just a short video. It's a really interesting result. I, I don't know anything else about it beyond what I've just said, but I'm so excited. I thought I would share it with you, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching.